Namaste. Mayor Dr. Panin and friends at Draft Shaft Bentheim and surroundings. My name is Krishna Shah, the Executive Director at Hoste Haise in Nepal. The last time we met was about two years ago in 2019 and little did we know that this region would be ravaged or the entire world actually would be ravaged by this deadly coronavirus. This video message to thank you in advance for the help that you are going to send out to both Nepal as well as India in light of the second wave that has really created a lot of havoc in this region for the last six weeks to eight weeks. We in Nepal are in day, I believe it is 35 now on lockdown. We haven't been able to leave our houses for the last month and a couple of days. And we're about two weeks to three weeks behind the wave in India. So whatever happens in India happens in Nepal about two to three weeks later. Um, the good news before I give you all of the bad news is that things are getting better. As you may have heard from the news in India, things are slowly recovering. And since we are just a few weeks behind India, we're seeing the same here in Nepal as well. So that's the good news. Um, the reality is, though, as with everyone, we don't know what the future holds. We don't know when, if the third wave is going to hit or if there's going to be a fourth wave, etc. We've seen from the news that Japan is being hit by the fourth wave. So I think we can at least, um, if not be alarmed about it, at least keep it in the back of our minds that there may be a third wave or a fourth wave and then be ready for it accordingly. I think that's the approach or the thinking we are taking these days. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how the pandemic is going here in Nepal. Uh, and this may sound like sharing a little bit of bad news, but that is not the purpose of this video. We've had, um, I'm not going to talk about the infection rate per se, because those numbers go up and down and um, you know, they may not be as important as the one number that cannot be um, uh, modified or tampered with, which is the death rate. In Nepal, ever since the pandemic started, we have had a death rate of about, as of yesterday, about 7,500. And the bad news is that of that death rate, half of the people who passed away happened during the second wave. That is over about the last 30 days or so. So that has been really alarming and that speaks volumes about what we are going through in this country. Things in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal where I'm located, things here in Kathmandu are getting better. But initial reports show that in the outskirts and in the rural parts of Nepal, things are slowly starting to get worse because as the virus travels outwards, and ravages uh, places that do, does not, do not have the um, same healthcare systems as in the capital here, it is bound to happen. So therefore, what we are doing these days is focusing more towards help and aid, seeing what we can do outside of Kathmandu. Um, there is so much more I could talk about, but I will just quickly talk about uh, what we're doing at Hoste Haise or what we have been doing at Hoste Haise in light of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, last year, during the first lockdown or when the, when, the, when the virus started hitting, we knew and when we knew very little about it, we did what everybody else uh, was doing, which was help with um, um, supplies such as medical, um, uh, PPEs, masks, sanitizers, soap, what have you, as well as relief materials such as um, food, uh, basic necessities, uh, shelter, etc. And uh, that was pretty much what we did during the first uh, lockdown or during the first pandemic, the first wave per se. And pretty soon we realized that um, there was some sort of um, saturation that we hit pretty soon as a country 
which which, which was good because as, as more aid helped the, the needy uh, reach the needy people, it helped everyone um, uh, as a whole. Now during the second pandemic, we were um, thinking about doing the same thing, but then we thought, okay. There is a lot of maturity in that field already. A lot of people are doing it already. Let's see what we can do now to kind of um, help in a different way. And that's where we thought, okay, who are the people that we're not thinking about right now? Um, or actually not thinking about is not the right term, but who, who do not get thought about a lot. That is the frontline health workers, the hospital workers per se. Yes, we do thank them, but very little aid and support goes to them. So what we did this time at the beginning of the second wave was we provided food and um, um, something as simple as lunch boxes. We sent them to the hospitals, to the frontline health workers, the doctors and the nurses, and that was really appreciated in the beginning. As the second pandemic grew, we started um, looking at the actual need that was uh, the need of the hour, which was at then um, the, uh, the lack of oxygen, as you may have um, seen in the news as well, in India, a lot of people died just because there wasn't enough, there weren't enough oxygen cylinders. Nepal, unfortunately, went through the same thing. The good news is that now things have gotten better, but during the last 30 days or so, we've done a lot of research on what to do on the front of oxygen and uh, bringing oxygen or generator, generating oxygen within the country. Here also we now are in touch with vendors who can provide oxygen plants, who can um, come and install them at a cost. We've done the feasibility study, etc., etc. But now what we've seen is that things, since things are getting better in Kathmandu, the heart of the country, we need to focus this effort on the outskirts of Kathmandu, or actually outside of Kathmandu, in the rural parts of Nepal, where the actual need is rising at the present. So that's another thing that we could be working on right now, is actual um, oxygen plants where there aren't any available, not in Kathmandu, but in the rural areas. And one such place, obviously, is where we run our schools, where we have been running our schools for the last 20 plus years that you have been supporting as well so a big thank you there too um i know this video is getting long but let me try and summarize it with uh, just a couple of uh, more points uh like to touch upon the vaccine uh scenario here in nepal i myself have been lucky enough to get uh both doses of the vaccine uh, we were offered the chinese vaccine here in public the first round was for the elderly uh, which was the Indian vaccine, but then when things started getting worse in, in India, India stopped the exporting of vaccines. Uh, then the Chinese vaccine came into Nepal, and just before the second wave lockdown started, I was lucky enough to get my first dose. And then just last week, after about 28 days, I was able to get my second dose of the vaccine. So I'm one of the few lucky people uh, that was able to you know, get both doses just by virtue of acting fast, signing up fast and and acting fast. But you know, people are different, people act different, people have different access to um, information technology, etc. These days you can sign up for the vaccine online at um, the Ministry of Health and Population here in Nepal, but not many people are proactive about that. And right now we're still waiting for the second lot of the vaccinations to start. It will happen here pretty soon, but we're still waiting for that to happen. Um, so likewise, vaccinations in Kathmandu are fairly um, slow. We will have to wait and see how the vaccinations unfold um, in the rural parts of Nepal, such as Sarlahi. I was, um, I'm being asked a lot, what can Hoste Haisen, a non-profit, do in the acceleration of bringing vaccines to Sarlahi, per se, a rural um, area? And the only thing I can answer is we can probably lobby the local government and the national government to expedite things and we can volunteer our time to help the vaccination process in Sarlahi, per se, if not other areas that we're active in. So that's a quick update on the vaccination front. Once again, I apologize, this, this video message has gotten quite long. There's a ton of other things I'd still like to talk about. I can fill you in, but um, let, me, let me wrap up and say, 
um, with your support we can definitely go after all of these things that we're proactively think of, thinking about not only for what's left of the second wave but to get ready for the third wave um, we're also as a recovery process talking to mental health experts for counseling per se because the first wave was bad enough for people on the ground level and now as they were slowly getting up from their feet the second wave hit them really hard and now you know it's not only the socio-economic conditions of people but also the mental state of people that we need to think about so you know counseling uh, mental health stress management anxiety is another um, aspect another angle that we're looking at as well okay so thank you once again for um, in advance for the support that you are sending out to Nepal and India I hope I wish all the best to all of us because we're all in this together no matter which corner of the world we're in and I look forward for this pandemic to be over soon and to be able to visit you in Bad Bentheim and likewise to be able to host you here in Nepal when you eventually come here. Thank you so much. Namaste.